Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to give you five Asperger's dating tips you need coming up. Hey, I'm Dan. I have Asperger's syndrome and this is how I specifically managed to have a successful dating relationship for the past 10 years and going strong. Hey, if you're new around here and you'd like to learn more about autism and mental health, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you know when I upload videos and you'll be the first to comment because I comment back and read every comment that I get. So in this video, you're going to get some information which isn't just like the same old rubbish from some old rusty books about, you know, dating and relationships. But this is personal life experience that I've gained over the past 10 to 11 years with me and my girlfriend and it's so successful. That's why I'm going to share these tips with you. Before we get started, guys, I just want to say that this video is kindly sponsored by Chasing Digital Excellence, this book by a guy called Peter Wolfart, and he actually has this amazing book. Um, they sent me this book, and I've actually just been going over it the past week, and it's amazing. It's basically like anybody who wants to start anything online, if it's an online business, it's a blog, it's a podcast, whatever it is, this book is a detailed guide-by-guide, guide, step-by-step, almost like a... a um, guide to get you started through everything like right now i'm looking at payment processes and shipping for my own website and then i've actually made another uh, page uh, here which is how to seduce my customers which is another page about selling and stuff but it's not like you know a typical marketing book it's not about marketing it's about personal branding it's about getting the best out of your facebook page your youtube page how you sell better online so if you've got a small business or any type of business that you feel would benefit from this book i highly recommend checking it out the book is available in the link below and you can get it directly on Amazon just like I did. You can get it on Amazon Prime as well which is pretty amazing. The book is quite extensive. It's got 300 pages and it's just absolutely jam-packed with information. I absolutely love this book and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this uh, and have them sponsor the video, it tells you stuff like how does Google capture image data and things like that and like keyword research, negotiating keywords and checking out like first impression. This book is incredible. Like honestly, like I was so amazed when I actually had this book and I sat down and actually just read through it. If you are new to the business and you want to start a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel just like this and be successful, I highly recommend checking out this book. It's amazing. Uh, you know, it's just, how can I explain? It's everything you need to know to start an online business and start an online blog. Just, yeah, definitely check it out. I can't recommend it more. And yeah, I'm so thankful that they sponsored this video because I'm a massive fan of this book. Okay guys, let's get into this video. So I'd like to know in the comment section right now, which do you prefer? Do you like to like get takeout food and deliver it to your house or go out to eat? Or do you cook a meal at home and eat that? Which one do you prefer, takeout or cooking at home? Let me know in the comment section below. I read and respond to every single comment I get, so please do that. <sighs> okay guys, I wanted to do a video on dating in Asperger's for quite a while. It's been uh, a fair few, um, months since I did anything on autism and dating and because I'm in a long-term relationship with my girlfriend and we have a baby and we have a house and we've been together for ages it's like 11 years I think this year which is pretty amazing but it's not always plain sailing and there's not always just like happy-go-lucky it you no know, has any issues just like any other relationship it also has really amazing things and just like any other relationship you have ups and downs because anybody who doesn't have ups and downs in their relationships well they, they must be lying because everybody has an ups and down in their relationship but when it comes down to Asperger's syndrome like autism and stuff like that you guys are already know that you have a hard time communicating with people, you have a hard time relating to certain people, you have a hard time being around people, social anxiety, anxiety disorder, depression, stress, um, meltdowns, breakdowns, burnouts, all these things are just overly active within a person with an autism spectrum condition and those things can then lead on to impacting places of your life like your work or your relationship or like family life and it's it's not a good thing um, when it starts to interfere with those things but sometimes it's unavoidable but what I tried to do and what I wanted to do here in this video is I've laid out five tips that I wanted to share with you how I am able to reduce any of those like bad negative impacts on a relationship so that maybe if you're dating someone with Asperger's syndrome then you can relate to this or if you're a person who has Asperger's syndrome and you're dating somebody who is neurotypical or vice versa then this is probably one of the best guides you'll get uh, up to date and I'm really I'm really proud about this and I love making these videos okay so let's jump in and we'll talk about number one so number one is having the calm down period so sometimes in relationships 
people will have disagreements and those disagreements will end uh, in like fighting or they could turn into like big arguments or whatever and how when people have rows or, or arguments in relationships it becomes quite an interesting heated uh, d debate and then everyone is kind of like stressed out and a person with an autism spectrum condition can actually become more stressed than an average person because they're just actually having a uh, you know a more uh, intense experience the whole thing is way more overloading for them so one of the things that we've kind of learned in this situation is that to avoid a meltdown happening because that's what happens if you if you're on the spectrum and you're in a very heated discussion with somebody then that will lead on to potentially being a meltdown so to avoid this if you get to a position where you are very stressed out in a very heated discussion with a partner on a disagreement or you know you're dating somebody with a disagreement it's having cool down period so you go okay i'm gonna have to go and cool down and we'll come back to the situation later because nothing gets resolved when you're just angry and just fighting at each other so it's like you know so we have the period where you go to one space and then they go to another space and you calm down and that calming period is going to allow you time to level out cool down not get as angry and then you can go back to the situation then you can attack that issue at hand with a level head rather than a heated over sensitive like emotional uh, aggressive potentially you know anxiety stress ridden situation so it's all about taking your self and protecting yourself that's, that's what you need to do and this goes for both sides not just the person with the autism spectrum condition it's both sides the neurotypical or the partner whatever they are neurotypical or neurodivergent you know they both need that cool down period because it's going to help both of them very important i've used it pretty much every single time that we have disagreements and it works a uh, hundred percent of the time okay so number two i'm talking about mood changes now this is quite interesting so one of the things that it took my partner a while to understand as she kind of like was dating me and kind of like you know around each other a lot more was understanding that my moods can change instantly so one minute i could be really really happy and the next minute i could be really really sad now people with an autism spectrum condition also have issues with depression you know personality disorders and they also have like adhd and all these kind of other comorbid conditions that come into it so a lot of the time they will be experiencing highs and lows or extreme highs and extreme lows that will just kind of turn on and off very quickly especially with adhd related autism spectrum conditions where one minute i'll be really angry about something and then i'll be like oh okay well i've forgotten about it because i'm on to something else now because my mind can only really occupy a space of something at any one time to really focus on so switching between those things because obviously Hyperfocus is something that's specific in autism and ADHD, where you kind of focus on a topic and then you get really into that topic, but also you are dedicating your time and focus and energy on the thing at hand. So if you've been really angry and that's what you're focusing your energy on, and then you want to do something else, and you switch the energy over and everything else is kind of forgotten about. And so my partner was like, well, we were just talking about this thing and now you've changed and you're just, you're not angry about it, you're not anything about it, you're talking about something else and where do we lie with this situation? And you think, well, okay, it's all down to mood changes. What needs to happen or what, you know, potentially could be a good thing is that you don't just think that the person's being rude, the, the autistic person is not being rude, they're just kind of switching between subjects so they will have to come back around to that subject and then look at it in more detail again and the mood changes, the changing moods for me are like happy and sad, you just have to kind of roll with it a little bit because by questioning that instant distance between being happy and being sad could potentially be quite catastrophic because it could lead to more meltdowns and destructive behavior. Okay, so we were talking a little bit at the beginning about communication and at its core, autism is a communication issue where people in the autism spectrum condition will have issues kind of uh, a data input of sensory processing. It could be audio, it could be light sensitive, it could be smells, it could be anything, it could be a vast variety of different stimuli that are data inputs. Now how the autistic brain deals with this is, is different to how a neurotypical brain can deal with it. So this is all about how stressful situations can cause audio issues. So number three is basically having a little bit more time and understanding that when someone is on the autism spectrum, then they may have issues with understanding audio conversation. And what I mean by this, is in heightened situations of stress or anxiety, when somebody's trying to tell me something, I can't s simply understand what they're saying. Sometimes I can't understand the words they're saying or the formation of the sentence. I have to ask them to repeat that several times. So especially if you can think about this scenario, you're in a relationship with somebody who's on the spectrum and you're not on the spectrum 
and then you're having a quite heated discussion with them and they're getting anxious about this discussion and then all of a sudden they ask you to repeat 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 and you're going to get annoyed at this well the reason they're doing that is because they can't actually understand the information that you are telling them i have a hard time doing this typically in daily life when someone says hey dan can you do this and i'm like uh can you like write that down and send me like an audio note so I can play it back and understand it? Because these are so difficult to understand. And that confusion can then cause a bit more anxiety if the person is obviously anxious to ask you again and again to repeat it. So kind of taking a little bit more time to understand and appreciate that a person may not understand the audio that you are speaking and the level or the understanding the tone or the or the topic of conversation or the flow of the conversation or the sentence in general. There's a lot of things that can be a big issue here. So just take time and just kind of make like a mental note to say, okay, I just have to take a little bit extra time as someone who's on the spectrum when they are you know, asking for clarity on a, on a conversation where they may not really understand the audio input. I mean, I have this massive issue. So if I'm like heightened stress-wise um, or I'm, I've got anxiety kind of going crazy, if anybody talks to me, I, I won't even be able to understand a word they're saying because I'm so it, like in my own head, I'm just like, oh, and then it's almost like they're talking a different language. Um, thumbs up if anybody can relate to this right now. I know a few of you guys are watching uh, who are my regulars, so if you can relate to this, please give it a thumbs up. Um, I think we got something like 300 thumbs up on one of my other videos. I want to try and like beat that. So why don't we do a little game here and like help me beat the, the system and give this video a thumbs up. Let's get it past 300 thumbs up. That'll be amazing and we can see, see what kind of power we have as a community. So. That being said, just a reminder, remember, take your time and you have to repeat yourself, you have to repeat yourself. And the person on the spectrum doesn't do this to annoy you and they're not doing this just to be awkward. It's just a condition and you know, it's it's just like anything else. You, know, you have to just accommodate for other issues or difficulties. Okay, number four is quite important, very important, super important. Now this is getting to know each other, your likes, your dislikes. What are you into? What are you not into? Like. When you are starting to date somebody on the spectrum, you're gonna to have to know what kind of stuff they're into and what kind of stuff they're not into, just like any other dating relationship. But it's more important to do that early on with Asperger's because if you decide to go kind of paintballing or go to a rave and then you take them out on a date, then the person with the autism spectrum condition is gonna be overwhelmed potentially in that situation and like not wanna be there. And it may cause the date to go sour. So what you don't want to do is start dating somebody on the spectrum and not really understand where their do's and don'ts go places are and what they do like to eat, what they don't like to eat because sensory processing disorder is a big issue. So, you know, music and sound and lights and also food and food textures and food types, you know, try and get to know the person before choosing somewhere as a surprise because the element of surprise could sometimes be difficult for someone on the autism spectrum to deal with and it could, could cause the date to go south. Now you don't want that. What you want is successful, good dating, good, healthy, fun relationship and you want it to go as smooth as possible. So get to know each other. And this goes for the person on the spectrum as well. Get to know the other person because by knowing what they like and what they don't like, you'll be able to judge your uh, present ideas or your date choices ideas or you know what to get them for a birthday or, or Christmas. And all of those things are so important because you need to understand the person and write these things down. That's what I do. I uh, and just, you know, understand what my girlfriend likes and dislikes, write it down on my phone. Then I have a complete comprehensive guide to do's and don'ts with my girlfriend. And it's a great idea. Anybody can do this. And I think it's a highly recommended uh, uh, idea or tip for anyone who's dating people on the spectrum. If you're not dating someone on the spectrum, or if you just want to, you know, get to know your partner a little better for better ideas for gifts, that always works. Okay, guys. Whew, we're just pacing through these and I'm so, so honored that you guys have been watching this far. So thank you so much. And also, if you feel like this video can help somebody, please share it on Facebook and Twitter because that would be super amazing. And tag me in the share because then I will be able to uh, respond and say hey and stuff because I love talking to people on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So please go and follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I usually follow people back. So go and do that now and then we'll, uh, we'll be friends, probably friends forever. Okay, number five is quite an interesting one and it's a technique we've used a few times 
times to understand each other. So when we're sitting down and we're talking about things, could be talking about you know moving house or buying a house or doing you know buying a new car or doing something that involves a bit of like imagination or, or potential imaginary thought. I have a huge issue understanding the explanation just from an audio standpoint. So what we actually have to do is my girlfriend will get like a, a notepad out or a drawing pad and we'll draw out some of the issues uh, of the things that we're talking about. So we'll draw out like you know if we're talking about moving house, we'll, we'll draw like this house and then the next house and the things we need to go in that house and we always do like drawing maps and my girlfriend's really cool she loves to kind of like draw stuff out and plan things out so it works really really well but one of the things is that it's very difficult for me to grasp ideas sometimes of how things go especially if you're in a heated situation if it's something quite stressful like moving house or getting a mortgage or like moving getting another car or getting a loan or whatever doing all those things right it's difficult to kind of comprehend at the best of times so what we do is we always like draw out stuff and if we can't draw something out we'll use kind of like place marks like we'll get like a, like a, a book and like put the book there and we'll get like a phone and put the phone there and you know we'll use those things as anchor points so I can visually kind of see a visual representation of what's going on because people on the autism spectrum like to visually see what's going on because sometimes talking at them to explain something can't really rock that out of our um, you know our quite strict thought of, of, of planning and those things are super important, especially when you're trying to create successful communication. Like I said, all we're trying to do is communicate better, understand each other better, to have a better and successful relationship, which I believe everybody here can do. And I know that you guys are gonna take these tips and absolutely run with it, and it's gonna be amazing. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see more videos, please click uh, the videos in the end card here to see more videos, and hit that subscribe button to see more videos continually for me, and I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.